So uh, good morning or uh, good evening if you're where Eric is. Uh, my guest this morning is Eric von Ruin and um, Todd Tritchler. And I just, Eric, I just want to start out by congratulating you. Um, recently, you were selected by a panel of ACE judges and um, ACE directors. First, you were nominated by the community and then um, selected as a finalist in the SQL category for the Oracle Database Developer Choice Award. So, Thanks again, and congratulations on that. Um, well, thank you. It was, uh, it was definitely... Sorry? It was a big surprise for me to be nominated and to be a finalist. So, yeah, thank you. Excellent, yes. Well, um, yeah, and, and for those that don't know, the, the awards are definitely... Um, for people that not only know their stuff technically, but also contribute back to the community. And that was what we wanted to do. And, and they were developer choice. So at the end of it, you know, people could vote on it. And, um, but the one, what we did is we had panels of judges that um, made sure that there was a certain bar. And I said, I don't really care who wins as long as everybody is solid and good contri at contributing back to the community. Mm -hmm. uh, so you obviously met that bar. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so Eric, um, I always am interested in terms of how people get to where they are in the technology. Um, how did you start out? I mean, did you always see, hey, I'm going to be a, uh, a SQL guru? Uh, <laughs> I know that you started out in as way back with Oracle in designer and forms and reports. Um, right. So you know you've obviously seen some seen some stuff change over the years. But how did you get your start? Well, I did not do any uh, computer science uh, education. Uh, I originally I was a, an analyst in a laboratory, uh -huh. uh, microbiology and biochemistry. Uh, completely different. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't continue doing that work after a, a, a car crash uh, that uh, I got a back in I got a back injury, wow. and I couldn't do that work anymore. So I had to decide on what's next, and my computer was my huge hobby. So uh -huh. I got the opportunity to get some retraining as an Oracle developer. Uh -huh. it took half a year, and then I started working as an Oracle developer and took it from there, so. So your back injury allowed you to work on, say, a computer sitting down, but you couldn't stand up, uh, you'd be yeah. on your feet all day, basically? Is, is exactly. that my understanding? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, it was a bit of providence there, but um, yeah. <laughs> it worked out well for you in the end, I take it? Oh yeah, very well, very well. It's, uh, it, it's the, I've had a great uh, career in, uh, in this uh, line of work, and. It's uh, it's fun. It's uh, even more fun than uh, my previous job. Uh, so, in the end, it, it was uh, for the better. But it's uh, it's unfortunate that it had to have a car accident to get me here. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I'm sure there's there's people that have traveled easier routes to get to an Oracle device. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Eric. Um, I was reading, you know, on some of the online stuff and sort of stuff that's been written by you and about you. And um, I, I see that you have a lot of um, experience in data migration projects. And, um, you know, you obviously had experience with Designer, the old, old uh, case tool. Um, and um, I'm interested to get your take in terms of, you know, a SQL developer obviously has the UML modeling and, and data migration built into it now. Um, how, have you used that at all uh, in in terms of migration projects yet? Have, what what do you use for migration? Well, my, the migrations I have been doing are basically mainly just SQL, PL SQL, and just some tools around that to well to do to, to schedule it and to make sure the the right parts get done in the right uh, order and stuff like that but it's mainly sql peel sql uh -huh. and uh sql developer i haven't used it a lot i'm trying to get uh to get to, to like it mainly because uh -huh. i uh my preference is uh, peel sql developer from peel sql developer okay yes. yeah and um, SQL developer is, is different. It's a lot different. And there's, there's parts I like. Mm -hmm. I like definitely, but not enough to make it my main tool. Yeah. So, and what do you actually use for migration then actually in terms of migration projects? Do you use PL SQL developer? Does it handle that? Or do you use an external migration tool? 
No, I don't use any specific migration tools. It's oh. mainly just SQL, PLC, PLC, SQL. I built an application in SQL, PLC, SQL to handle the, the migration. Ah, okay. And the migrations I'm talking about are mainly data migrations for, well, a company buys another company and the two uh, databases have to be merged into one. Okay. So it's basically unloading data, transforming it, and putting it in, in another database. So you can really use the tools that are just built into the database itself yeah, then for that. Exactly. Okay, excellent. Now, um, well, you obviously learned uh, to learn new tools along the way. Is there anything new and cool that you like playing with at the moment, or are you pretty much completely you know, buried and, and tied up in SQL at the moment? Yeah, well, I'm mostly just working with SQL and PL SQL. I love, uh, I love Apex, and I love uh, playing around with that, but I haven't done a lot with that yet. Uh, I haven't done any real world stuff with that, but mm -hmm. I love it, but I don't work with it. Mm -hmm. And well, yeah, I love the database. I love being in there. So uh, pretty yeah. much anything related to that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great. So uh, speaking of the database, um, favorite features? Um, I'm working with 12C at the moment, so it's uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great uh, great database, some great new features. Uh, I think the best, the one I love the best at this moment is uh, the fact that we that now you can do PL SQL in SQL in the with clause and uh, with UDF Pragma, Pragma. So now well, every now and then you have to do PL SQL in SQL. You don't want to do it, but every now and then you have to. And now with the PL SQL in the with clause or with uh, a, a function that's uh, that's got a UDF pragma, and do that with reasonable uh, performance, as opposed to before when the performance was just just bad, playing bad. Yeah. yeah. So uh, and exactly, I mean, for somebody that hasn't developed with that before, how would you explain the strengths of that? Sorry, how would I explain what? How would you explain the strengths of that feature to somebody uh, that hasn't used it before? Well, um, before, whenever you used uh, uh, PL SQL in SQL, when you you call a function in, in SQL, you would constantly have making it very slow. And now, from what I understand, because I don't know exactly what Oracle did to uh, to 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 get to, to get this, but from what I understand, there's a lot less context switches because of uh, the fact that you have this PL SQL in your with clause in the select. It's a part of the select. It's okay. a part of this, and the UDF pragma is more or less the same. Only you define this PL SQL within a package, and you give it a UDF pragma. And then you can use it in SQL. It's well, it's it's optimized for use in SQL, so the the perform there's a performance gain there. Excellent, great. So great. basically, you're doing the same thing, but they've done some work under the covers that yeah. makes it a lot faster as as yeah. a result of that. Yeah, exactly. Great. So. Um, some of the projects that you've worked on, obviously you've had a you know, fairly long career here. Um, what are some of the more interesting projects that you've worked on involving database app dev and the Oracle database? Well, the ones I liked the best were the, the, the data migrations that you mentioned before. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I love those because they are complex. Uh, they, are, uh, they, they involve a lot of data. Uh, you have to performance with every step that you take because, well, you're working on this uh, application and um, there's going to be one moment that you're going that that is going to go live, and uh, this moment will be usually a weekend. People go home on yeah. Friday night. You got your one day here. It is going. In the morning, it's going to be there, and that's that's the window, and you cannot go. Out of that window, and that's uh, with lots of data. That's that's a challenge, and I love that. And when you say lots of data, what's some of the larger databases that you've migrated like that? Well, I don't know in terms of gigabytes, but um, well, I've been working for an energy company in Netherlands uh, that bought other 
companies, and that's a, a lot of uh, a lot of customers with a lot of data from well, the measuring data from uh, w- what they have uh, used in, in mm-hmm. terms of energy, and so that's a lot of data. And well, like I said, I don't know in terms of so a huge migration consolidation project because yeah. of all these subsidiaries that need to be brought into the fold. Yeah. Excellent. So, um, you know, you obviously had a bit of a different route getting into technology and that, but, you know, just if you meet a, a, at a conference, you meet a young developer, you know, just getting started, he's, and he asks you, okay, well, what type of technology should I be focusing on if I really want to have a successful career? What advice would you give somebody like that? Well, I don't know exactly what to say about that because it, um, the technology it changes it constantly changes so I would say just pick whatever technology is sexy at this moment and what you like because in a couple of years there will be something else that is sexy then so <laughs> do whatever you like but do not forget about the database do not uh, do not forget what it can do for you, what its strengths are, how it works, and how you can make it work for you. Because often you see people that forget about that. They use a certain technology and they uh, work with the database, but they forget the strengths of the database and they think they can do things better than the database. And usually you can't. So use the database for what it's, uh, for what it's good at. Excellent. So um, one of the things that I saw while uh, reading around uh, on, on, on your website there is, uh, is you're trying to uh, get started uh, or bootstrap a European conference for similar to OD Tug's K-Scope, but in European, so E-Scope, I think you could hear. <laughs> yeah. You're currently that's right. on it. Yeah. That's right. Uh, together with uh, Kimberg Hansen, uh, we've been trying to uh, to get people enthusiastic about uh, having a, a, a case scope like conference in Europe. Uh, we did that last year. We were very enthusiastic ourselves. We still are. Yeah. Well, it's and where was that? At? Where did where did you hold that at? You said you did it last year, or you're just starting? Well. Up? No, I don't. I don't mean that we had this conference last year. We, I mean, we were working on uh, uh, getting people enthusiastic about this last year. Okay. And we talked to some Oditak people uh, at Kscope uh, 15. Mm-hmm. Um, they were not all very enthusiastic, so mm-hmm. that was a bit of a setback for us. And yeah that well it, it kind of died a bit, a bit so we have to pick it up again because I, th- I still think it's a good idea uh-huh. to have a conference like that in Europe okay that travels around so, that what about the I mean how would you organize that because I mean you already have some very strong user groups there I mean the Dutch user group there the UK or UG DOAG um, you have some very strong uh, I, well, they're more than national user groups because they, they, they draw from the whole region of Europe. Um, and, and so where, I mean, where would you locate that? Uh, and I assume you would time it to not conflict with, with some of those major ones. Oh, definitely. I think it's, uh, it would have to be uh, in cooperation with the local user groups. Uh, so we don't uh, draw well, we, I'm saying we, but I mean the, the conference doesn't uh, draw too many people from those other conferences. Of course, if this, if a conference like this would land in some country, then there would be some effect to uh, the people showing up at a, at a conference. Mm-hmm. But I think it would be wise to have it uh, a traveling conference, just like uh, K-Scope itself uh-huh. is. And just, and at least at first, focus on the countries that do not have uh, uh, a conference like uh, DOAG or or the like. I mean, there are a lot of countries that do not have such a community, but they do have... You're thinking of like doing like Latvia and, you know, maybe Prague and, and, you know, places places that that might not have 
that large of a conference by themselves. Exactly. And there are a lot of developers that would probably get uh, clearance from their uh, from their uh, employer to go to a conference, but not if it's on the other side of Europe or if it's in America. Okay, so and that that would was my next question because um, sometimes you know the guys get a choice of well you get one conference to go to this year and people are like okay well I can either go to K Scope or I can go to Doag because it's a train ride um, or UKG um, yeah. having an additional choice there um, you're you're saying that there's you actually is a need to meet in terms of people will have trouble getting permission even to go from one side of Europe to the other side of Europe? Yeah, true, yeah. Okay, so yeah. in which case your, your, your target audience is really those national developer communities of those areas that, you know, aren't say served by UKRG or DOAG or, or, or something like that, yeah? I think that at least at first uh, we would have we would have to focus on on that just traveling around and mainly at first going to to countries that don't have this kind of uh, uh, um, this kind of uh, events uh, in the country itself. Yeah, and I think that you mentioned DOAG and UKOEG. They they draw a lot of international uh, attention. But yeah, I mean, they'll, they'll I think have people coming the, from the states and all over the place. Yeah, but I think the main international uh, people, the main people coming over there from other countries, are the ones presenting, the ones attending. I think there's a lot less. Most, mostly Europeans, yeah. Most, I, I would give you that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and. I think well, that's what we're focusing at the, the the people attending. Yeah, draw them to the to these conferences, and I think a traveling uh, uh, conference could potentially get more people to attend uh, events, even if they are not in the neighborhood. Yeah, because I meet a lot of people. If I tell them uh, I'm going to some conference, uh, so, ah, well. I don't have time right. for that. Yeah, I, I can't get there. <laughs> and I think if they have been to one once, yeah, that they, they, they're sold, then they then they will go to to the next and to the next and to every one yeah. they can. But won't you find that you'll have the same problem um, unless you can draw like Odi Tug does? I mean, they've built up their brand so much that people will come around the world to get to K Scope. Yeah. Um, won't you find that you you have to keep on rebuilding your conference for each each time you hop in Europe because you're until you get to that point where you're like Odi Tug and you can say, hey, you know what, we really are a flagship developer conference mm -hmm. for developers. You know, database app development. This is the one you want to be to. Uh, um, they have they've reached that point where they can draw from outside of their their region. You know, even the even, whereas you're going to be constantly on each new one mm -hmm. starting literally from scratch until you get to that point in each new nation. Now, the fact that you're rotating it around in Europe, that should give you an, hopefully give you an advantage in terms of the people that are local that can get to it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I realize that if we, if we're going to start an, an e-scope that it's, uh, it's going to be hard. It's not going to be uh, a four and a half day conference like K-Scope uh, yeah. with a great uh, party on Wednesday night and what have you. Um, it's going to be hard. It's going, probably going to be a, a smaller conference at first, one or two days maybe. Uh, it's going to have to grow and it's going to, yeah, it's going to be hard. Yeah. Um, we are really focused at trying to get K-Scope to be involved in this. If, uh, uh -huh. I'm sorry, Odi Tuck to be in, uh, involved yeah. in it. They have the experience. They know yeah. uh, what uh, what you should do, what you shouldn't do. Yeah. Um, I would love for Odi Tuck to do this. And in this interview, I've been talking about we are doing this and we and we and we. Yeah. But what I mean is this conference. And I don't have to be involved. I don't care. <laughs> Odi Tuck calls me tomorrow and says, hey, great idea. We're going to do this step yeah. back. Yeah. Great. Great. Yeah. Uh, so I would love to have people 
experience in this do this yeah. and try to make it work um, i love to i would love only talk to be that uh, that group of people to do this and i would love to have this done in cooperation with the local user groups who have knowledge about uh, well the, the, their locale yeah so if that would be the case only talk to, together with local user yeah. groups then i think this could work yeah yeah the uh the one thing that you you might need to address there is the um Oditug has really good uh, resources in America in terms of logistics uh, and, 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 and knows how to really you know, resource it. So whereas they're rotating around North America, yeah. they don't have the same level of logistics in Europe. Yeah, that's true. Um, so that would be something that just off the top of mind that you're, you're going to need yeah. to address um, in yeah. terms of even if they take the management aspect of it, who are going to be your local logistics and and how much of that is the local Oracle user groups going to take on yeah. um, to, to make it successful. But I wish you all the best on that. Good, <laughs> good luck with that. Um, okay, thank you. Uh, you know, any time that we can get um, good opportunities for developers to learn technology i'm you know it's it's a good thing so um it, as you say it's going to be hard but uh yeah. Yeah. Well, kudos to you for uh, actually uh, wanting to do it <laughs> so, yeah, <thank> you. <laughs> so eric um i just wanted to thank you for your time uh thank you just uh again for the contributions back to the community you know, in the forums and um, we'll love to do it. So, so uh, you're welcome. Just uh, keep it up and uh, tot ziens. Thank you. See ya. Okay. Bye.